When the blue of the night meets the gold of the day. Judge Conlon's for the mayors, and Bing's guest, Judy Garland. And now on this cool, crisp October evening, we bring you the Harvest Moon, better known as Bing Crosby. Well, why can't... How come you liking me to the har- Harvest Moon? Why for this poetic introduction? What? Well, you, you do cable. remind me of the Harvest oh, Moon, Bing. Know. Yes, you're so bright and cheerful. Oh, well, that's true. That's absolutely right, yeah. And when you sing, your voice is as soft as its moonbeam stealing across a deserted cornfield. Really? Well, thank you. And you're so round. Just a minute. Just a minute. I, I really lost so much weight this summer, I turned all of my old slacks over to my brother Everett. Oh, um, is he going to wear them? No, he's going to alter them. Oh. He's got to be back Monday, too, with every one of them. I didn't know Everett was handy with a needle and thread. He had me sewed up for years. <laughs> me, Ken, this year, let's not do a lot of jokes about Everett. If we can't say anything nice about him, we won't utter his name. Everett has just received his last ut. Ut, ut. <laughs> this may lead to a drastic new form of entertainment, silent radio. Might be good, yeah. Of course, we can always break the silence with some music, and now seems a propitious moment to start. If the rhythm airs will festoon themselves about me, and John Scott will arouse his melody makers, we shall do the number one song on the cute parade. Love somebody. It's really cute as the dick. <laughs> Somebody, yes I do. I love somebody, yes I do. I love somebody, yes I do. Love somebody, but I won't say who. Didn't take me long to fall. Now her picture's on my wall. Water for my baby doll. If she kissed me. I wouldn't mind at all. I love somebody. Yes, I do. Love somebody. Yes, I do. Love somebody. Yes, I do. Love somebody, but I won't say who. Oh, love somebody. Yes, I do. But I won't say who Don't know why she acts so shy Really, I'm a harmless guy Hope she doesn't pass me by Cause if she did, I'd die I know I'd die I love somebody Yes, I do Love somebody Yes, I do I love somebody, yes I do. I love somebody, but I won't say who. I love somebody, tell us who. I love somebody, yes I do. You love somebody, but you never say who. If I told anybody, I wouldn't tell you. Too. I like that tune, but I do feel the lyric could be more specific. That was a very nice commercial, shortened to the point. Thank you. Now we continue uh, just a minute. on with the now, show. Now, hold it. We'll wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Big no, 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 wait. We're, We're going to stop right now. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'd also like to tell the people about the new Philco phonograph, built especially for the new long-playing records. Long-playing? What are they, long-playing records? 
Well, being modern science has invented a new record that plays for 45 minutes. A record that plays for 45 minutes? Mm-hmm. It's going to open up a whole new field for disc jockeys. They can take in laundry between numbers. <laughs> While I'm getting my bundle ready, can you throw your bundle right in there? Well, who knows, Bing? Maybe next year's Philco's will do your bundle while they play your numbers. But meanwhile, Philco's opened up a whole new field for everybody who plays records. Philco's 1949 radio phonographs play two kinds of records. All your standard ones automatically, plus the revolutionary new long-playing kind that give you 45 minutes of music from a single 12-inch record. Not only that, these new Philco's assure you top performance from the long-playing record. Because they were designed in the Philco Laboratories after a long program of close collaboration with the same engineers who developed the long-playing record. Now, you get this advantage only with a Philco. See your Philco dealer now and listen to the real thing on a Philco. Famous for quality the world over. Here's my admonition to Rose, the rambling one. She's a rambling rose, she's a beauty growing wild. And I expect she's a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech, so meek and mild. She's got the kind of affection that just winds around your heart. You better run for protection. Or she might upset your apple cart. I hate to disclose that my rambling rose is going to meet her Waterloo. I let her play, but she can't get away, because I know just what to do. Anyone knows you can train a rose to be a clinging vine. So from this day hence, there'll be a picket fence around that rambling rose of mine. Everyone knows she's a rambling rose, she's a beauty growing wild. Birds in their nests seem to whistle their best for Mother Nature's favorite child. Disclose that my rambling rose is gonna meet her Waterloo. I let her play, but she can't get away, cause I know just what to do. Anyone knows you can train a rose to be a clinging vine. So from this day hence, there'll be a picket fence round that rambling rose. inevitable time when we take the peep into the Philco guest nest, which this evening harbors a young, beauteous, and very brown-eyed songbird who has also copped considerable kudos for some sterling, dramatic, in terms of Korean clicks and picks. Judy Garland. Come and curtsy, Miss Judy, hmm? Thank you, Mr. C. Just look at you. <laughs> Little Judy Garland. I can hardly believe it's really the little Judy I used to know. Oh, it's me, all right. Judy, I remember the first time I sang with you. It wasn't too long ago, and you, you were just a kid in pigtails then. Yes, I remember how you kept admiring them. Mm -hmm. You were so jealous, even in those days. <laughs> what happened to those pigtails? <laughs> what happened to my pigtails? Yeah. I cut them off. <laughs> What'd you do with your curl thing? Paste them in your scrapbook? <laughs> no, I pasted them in my hat. <laughs> My winter hat, too. <laughs> the old beaver fedora that I wear. 
Anyway, Judy, I just can't get over how you've blossomed. You've developed. You're a young lady, young woman. Young womanhood. <laughs> what did you expect, manhood? <laughs> no. I got to the queue. I came by way of uh, Ashtabula, though. <laughs> Seems to me only yesterday you were a mere child. Just think you're a married woman now and a mother. Oh, well, don't be so surprised, Bing. It happens to all of us sooner or later. We all become mothers. I didn't. <laughs> you always were one to shirk work. <laughs> Confident. Confidentially, Judy, now. Tell me. Tell me confidentially, yes, Judith. Yes. Are you happy with your new career as wife and mother? Well, I'm divinely happy. Luella. Thank you, Susan Hayward. Let's see. Uh, you had a little girl, didn't you? That's right, Bing. I had a little girl. Shirley Temple had a girl. Jean Crane had a girl. Betty Davis had a girl. Girls, girls, girls. Everybody's having girls nowadays. Yeah, well, we're just trying to balance up the score your team made. I so. <laughs> see what you mean. That reminds me, uh, Judy, how old is Liza now? Well, how, how old is your Lindsay? That's what I'm getting at. I figure that if we can make a deal with my Lindsay and your Liza, I'd be willing to throw in the twins as household help. <laughs> Up along. Very handy kids. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm afraid Liza's is too young to think about matrimony yet, Bing. She won't be ready to start looking for a husband for years. Well, when she's ready, can you arrange for her to do some window shopping over around my trap? <laughs> but by the time she's ready, all your merchandise will be gone. It's real gone now. <laughs> oh, but they'll probably be married and living with their own little families and... Well, say Houston, Texas. Houston? What's the matter with us right here in Hollywood? Oh, come now, Bing. Surely you don't expect Hollywood to still be here in 20 years, do you? Oh, it's got to be here. Where will they make the 10th Jolson story? <laughs> I know, but the way they're, they're cutting down expenses yeah. and pictures and everything, mm -hmm. what this current economy wave keeps up, Hollywood may soon be just a technicolor memory. I heard they're dropping people right and left, but I thought it was just a rumor. Rumor? Yes. Nothing, no. They're even cutting down on the people they're letting go. <laughs> this is a shaky state of affairs, I want to say, huh? <laughs> but right, uh, can you imagine what'll happen if this economy wave spreads to the radio? Imagine breakfast in Hollywood would become just a snack in Azusa. <laughs> or just a crawler in Cucamonga. Here, now. <laughs> John would have to go back to his first wife or something. <laughs> The tobacco auctioneer could chant for a half an hour and wouldn't sell nothing to nobody. Not... <laughs> oh, it'd be grim. Oh, awful. Awful. Imagine Jeez. the effect of the economy away, but economy away. The economy away, but the economy. I tell you what. Where are you working? The, <laughs> the economy wave would have on all those quiz programs, Dan. Oh, cut them right to the bone. Yeah. One night we're liable to tune in on our filters and we'd hear. This is Ken Carp welcoming you on behalf of our economy-minded sponsors to a brand new quiz program entitled Take It and We'll Break Your Arm. <laughs> this ten-minute half hour is sent your way with the compliments. <laughs> this ten-minute half hour is sent your way with the compliments of smog cigarettes. <laughs> Listen to what Mr. J. Scott Trotter, a tobacco leaf feeler of Felt Tobacco Leaf, North Carolina. <laughs> has to say about our product. Well, sir, I've been chewing smogs for nigh on to 40 years. <laughs> and now on with Take It and We'll Break Your Arm. Starring your genial penny-pinching master of quizimonies, <laughs> Happy Harry Crosby. Oh, thank you, Ken Carpenter. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A funny thing happened to me on the way to the studio. I had to walk. But enough of me and my problems. Let's get on with the show. This week, we're just loaded, just loaded to the gunnels with money and prizes the same money and prizes we had last week. And remember, if you guess the answers to our questions, next week, organ music. <laughs> now, let us get along here with the first show. And who is our next lucky contestant tonight, Ken? And here she is, Happy Harry, this lovely little lady. And a good, good evening to you, Miss... Uh, or is it Mrs.? It's, it's Mrs. Mrs. Evelina Noodlesburg. <laughs> that did it. <clears throat> okay, then. Here's your first question. What is the annual salary of the Vice President of the United States? Uh, hmm. Uh, $15,000 a year, including kids. That is correct. Absolutely correct, Mrs. Yes. Noodlestrup. Yes. Absolutely yes. correct. Yes. And do you see that beautiful new Philco refrigerator standing over there in the corner? Yes, sir. Well, you win a handful of ice cubes from that refrigerator. <laughs> Economy 
only way, if you know. Well, well what, what do I get if I answer the next question? A beautiful vacation trip. A oh, vacation trip? Mm-hmm. Where to? Well, if you answer the second question, you get a trip to Honolulu. Honolulu? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Here it is. Chicken a la king was named after an English monarch who originated the recipe himself. Which monarch is that? Uh, I'll wait a Um... Uh, King Edward the Seventh. Absolutely correct, Mrs. Noodle Slurp. And you win a one-way trip to Honolulu. A one-way trip? That's right, and here are your swim fins. <laughs> but, 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 but a, but a one, one-way trip, how do I get back? Well, you get on a quiz show over there, you win a return trip. But suppose I can't. In that case, Mrs. Noodle Slurp, aloha. <laughs> Well, can I try winning something else on the next one? All question? right, but this is your last question, the big jackpot. That's what I'm waiting now, for. Now, in the jackpot question, you have your choice of prizes. Either $500 in cash, a presto cooker, yeah. or a mix master. Which would you take? Why, the $500, of course. Sorry, that's the wrong answer. Thank you. <laughs> Judy, that was a pretty grim picture we painted of what could happen here if the economy wave ever engulfed radio to such an extent. Well, you never know, Bing. They're even cutting down on the money they spend for music these days. They keep giving us all the old tunes. Well, that's very clever. I love the old tunes. Those are the only ones I know. (laughs) Judy, while we got you here, I think we ought to sing some of the old tunes, some of those great songs you did in some of your pictures. Oh, that's a good idea, Bing. It may stir up some old memories. Stir up some for me, too. All right. How about this one from The Wizard of Oz? Oh, I know what that is. I know what's coming. I hope Buddy Coe's... Aware? Are you aware? Are you there? Let's have that piano. Smelled like lemon drops away above the chimney tops. That's where you find me. Somewhere over the rainbow, bluebirds fly. Birds fly over the rainbow. How about you and me bending uh, on uh, me and my gal? Hey, I'm with you, Ken. Well, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> the bells are ringing for me and my gal. Birds are singing for me and my gal. Everybody's been knowing to a wedding they're going. And for weeks they've been sewing every Susie and Congregating, baiting, waiting for me and my gal. Parsons waiting for me and my gal. And sometime we're gonna build a 
little home for two or three or four or more in love land for me and my cat. Oh, <laughs> Have we got time for a half a chorus of who? That's a good tune. Yes, Who? That ought to go over big. Certainly. We'll get mail from owls all over the country. <laughs> what, kind, what kind of letters do you get from owls? Nice letters. Aye, aye. Let's sing it. This material has got to go on the floor. Get out. <laughs> Night owl. <laughs> Ooh, stole my heart away. Who makes me dream all day? Dreams I know. Come true. Seems as though I'll ever be blue. Who means my happiness? Who will I answer yes to? When you are the guest, who? time now, Judith, so let's cuddle up with embraceable you. Oh, it's too hot to cuddle. That remark was transcribed earlier for release at a time when everybody may be frozen blue. <laughs> let's sing that. Sing what? Frozen blue. Frozen blue, frozen blue. <laughs> These veins in my eyes telling you. <laughs> well, we better stick to embraceable you. Being the boy, I'll begin it. <laughs> Ma'am. What's the matter? <laughs> Embrace me, my sweet embraceable you. Embrace me, you irreplaceable you. Just one look at you, my heart goes tipsy in me. You and you alone bring out the gypsy in me. Papa do my sweet embrace you really was a very enjoyable few minutes. It seems like you sang all those tunes in no time at oh, all. Oh, no pussyfoot around, Ken. Let's have your commercial in no time at all. I shall gab with the speed of light. Well, turbojet the whole thing, <laughs> right? Well, Bing, it takes a turbojet commercial to keep up with the new developments from the Philco Laboratories. Right now, Philco has pioneered the most revolutionary improvement in phonographs since the record changer. I mean the phonograph that plays the new 45-minute record, of course. It comes to you straight from headquarters, developed in the Philco Laboratories, especially for the long-playing record. Now, what's that to you? Well, for one thing, it's the listening thrill of your life. For another, it's your assurance that Philco's new radio phonographs play the long-playing records the way they were meant to be heard, thanks to a new tone arm created for them by Philco. So visit your Philco dealer now. You'll get a kick out of enjoying all the music from a six-record symphony album or a whole program of dance or dinner selections played on a single long-playing record with new brilliance and fidelity. Figure it out for yourself. Doesn't your radio phonograph sound out of date? Compare it with the newest thing in radio phonographs from Philco, the leader. Oh, Judy, it was 
was sure wonderful doing all those old tunes with you, but I'd like to prove to people that we know what's going on right at present. How about doing a little duet on a current composition? All right, Bing. You mean something like Confess? Oh, yes, like Buddy Clark does it with <laughs> that little girl, Doris Day. Hmm? <laughs> right. Confess. 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 Why don't you confess? Say yes, say yes. I wish you'd reveal to me. Reveal to me. The way that you feel. Why don't you tell me the way that you feel? Confess. 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 It isn't a crime. Oh, no, no crime. To open your heart to me. Confide in me. And say that you're mine. Why don't you tell me you're gonna be mine? How long can I keep waiting for a tender word from you? The sweetest rose starts fading when the sunshine won't come through. Confess. 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 Please don't make me guess. Don't if you really care for me If you could care Then, then darling, confess Confess Why don't you confess Why don't you reveal, reveal to me Reveal to me The, the way that you feel <laughs> Sweetest rose starts fading when the sunshine won't come through. Confess. All right, I'll talk. Please don't make me guess. Don't make me walk. If you really care for me. If you could care. Then, darling, confess. Confess, confess. Now to thank Judy Garland for her charming and melodious visit and to make the following announcement. Judy Garland appeared by arrangement with Metro Golden Mayor, producers of the Technicolor picture The Three Musketeers, starring Lana Turner, Gene Kelly, and June Allison. With every good wish, I am sincerely yours, Leslie Peterson, director of radio. <laughs> oh, I didn't have to read all of that. <laughs> what happened there? What happened? <laughs> Oh, gee. Leo the lion's going to be so happy about I can hear him purring from here after that big announcement. <laughs> Who's going to be next week? Well, next week, Judy, is our big Vancouver, British Columbia show that we're going to send from north of the border. And we're taking quite a mob up there with us. Ray Milan, William Gargan, Joe Venuti, and, of course, Joe Venuti's violin. Oh, what a cast. I wish I could go with you. So do we, Judy. Well, have a nice trip, Bing, and so long. See you soon, Judy. Good night, kiddo. Good night. <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night. Produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Bill Morrow and Murdo McKenzie. Tune in to Philco Radio Time next week and hear Bing Crosby, John Scott Trotter and his orchestra, the Rhythm Airs, and Bing's guests, Ray Milland, William Gargan, and Joe Venuti. And remember, keep your eye on your Philco dealer now for the newest thing in radio from Philco, the leader. <laughs>